Henry, I have this great desire, as do many people, to really understand what this environment that I find myself is all about, the universe, uh, the earth, just how are things constructed? And I'm told uh, throughout my scientific career that I have to understand quantum mechanics. So I come to you to ask you how I can understand quantum mechanics so I can understand everything else. Well, <clears throat> I think that has a, actually a pretty simple answer, surprisingly <laughs> enough. Um, people are used to thinking in classical physics terms. And when you think in classical physics terms, the universe is constructed by a process, a continuous process, and in fact, a deterministic process. So, as you know, things at the beginning determine what's going to happen for the rest of eternity. Without any possibility of, ch of, of, of differences. It's just de totally determined. Just an evolution. Uh, particle billiard balls bounce off each other in a well-determined way, and uh, the whole universe kind of is a... Uh, an elaboration of a similar sort of uh, mechanism. A big pool <laughs> table. Yeah. And um, quantum mechanics is totally different in a very important way. It's built out of events. It's built out of discrete events. These discrete events or happenings um, 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 according to quantum mechanics, in order to how we can understand quantum mechanics, do have two aspects, a psychological aspect and a physical aspect. So the whole construction of the universe is totally different. Instead of a process that is fixed at the beginning of time and then just grinds on endlessly, you have these events. And each event can have, and it makes sense to think that it does have, a certain um, creative aspect to it. In other words, it, it takes certain things from the past and uh, has a creative impulse to do something, make something uh, which extends into the future, some conceptual idea. Or and when something. you're saying event, you, you don't mean like a, a baseball game is an event. You mean, you mean something that's happened in a very microscopic way. In fact, uh, the way quantum theory seems to work is that it has to happen in fact, instantaneously. You're going along, and then suddenly, in an instant, it changes to something else. And um, you can begin to ask the question, well, why do we think that our experiences have a duration? And I can go into that question, but um, avoiding that question, the way quantum theory really works is that these events are instantaneous events. And uh, each one... A sequence of these. There's a sequence of them. And each one is instantaneous. Mm. And then something else happens and there's a new, new world is created. And uh, so there's no need for this. Uh, so the question then is, well, you have this process in which you're thinking of is, has psychological elements to it. And uh, it, instead of having a universe that somehow God set up and started running at the beginning and it just grinds away and does nothing, you have this perpetual input of, you might even say, God-like uh, inputs. Something that's at least not physical, something that's coming more from a psychological realm. And uh, there is... Um, every instant. Not every instant. Uh, there's a little period of time, then there's another event, and then there's yeah, okay. a, a little... Every instant there's an event. Every instant at which there's an event. Which is an event. So there's some evolution for a while, and then there's an event. Mm. And there's a little more evolution, and there's another event. And uh, so this event is certainly allowed to have, and Alfred North Whitehead is the big proponent of this idea, that each of these events can be imagined to have a, a creative input into the world. So instead of the world already being created, once for all, at the beginning, and then just evolving mechanically, you say, no, little bits keep of this creative input are put in as you go along. You, you see what you've got, and then you put a little bit more creativity in. So, Does it make why, sense why, to ask how much time there is between these events? 
Well, one of the one of the uh, uh, questions is what determines when the events occur. Okay. And the other question is once you say when it occurs, what occurs? Okay. So those are two aspects that um, that quantum mechanics puts in the hand of the experimentalist, of the observer, uh -huh. of the conscious, whatever it is. Uh -huh. So if you take the human element out, but just look at what seems to be happening, you have these psychological events, and instead of all of creativity and all of the freedom of what could be being put in right at the beginning. The initial conditions and the, the laws and then everything runs. You say no. It's a process. You put in a little bit of creativity here, and then it's, there's a process that takes in what, what the situation was and, and does some psychological evaluation and, uh, and says the next thing is going to be. So but says that the process, process is a, is a, continu uh, a repetitious in or a, a, an input, repeated input of, of, of creativity into the universe as you go along. But there was a vast period of time, of course, and vast parts of the universe where there are no human beings at all. No human creativity sure. can be involved in any of that. No human psychology, yeah, both right. in time and in space. Yeah, so that's, that's, so how do that's you an get interesting, th the way that quantum mechanics works in actual practice involves human beings, because we set up experiments. Sure, sure. We want to make predictions that's about what our experiences are going to But uh, certainly you don't want to say that this creative process is just uh, localized in human beings. You want to say that all sorts of things can uh, also contribute. Sure. First, simpler life forms, for sure. And then there's even a question of, well, does it have to be a life form? I've, I've uh, given you, uh, I should, there are examples of, of how quantum collapse processes are important already in the very simplest life forms, just the harvesting of light and the energy of the... Okay, energy. but that's, that's limited to this Earth. Sure, I mean, sure. quantum mechanics sure. would, would, for the whole vastness sure. of, of sure. the universal history and so don't you space want to say that no these, life at all. These processes, yeah. There's first, there's first a question of, of, is life essential? And I think you've got to say, no, life is not essential. Even the simplest life does manifest this, so presumably all life manifests itself. But I don't think it makes sense to say that the universe was just evolving potentialities f for billions of years before the first cell or first life. So, so, so how are you involving the psychological creative process at each well, event? You know, there's an interesting book by Fred Hoyle called The Black Cloud. You ever heard about it? Yeah, sure. Do you know the, you know uh, the yes, story? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this is a big cloud right. that's moving through the universe and they're moving through right. these and it gobbles up planets and uh, and it turns out this cloud is intelligent yeah, right. <laughs> and basically the earth is saved by somebody communicating <laughs> its intelligence to the intelligence of the black cloud so uh, this is a, a fictional story by a very eminent uh, astronomer and um, um, but you know we don't necessarily have to say that that this creative impulse is, is only in life, you know, to be sure. I don't have a detailed uh, proposal as to exactly how it's going to occur outside of life. But you do think it's necessary? Well, it, it is possible that the universe evolved potentialities, 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 until amongst all those potentialities, some life thing occurred. And then there was a collapse. And these other ones that had no life in it got blotted out. And, and life was picked out. That would explain this anthropic principle, how everything is, or at least tied into the anthropic principle. So, uh, you know, we're getting far beyond where science, what science has to say sure. today. Science today tells us that consciousness is, seems to be necessary to make quantum mechanics work, to make our physics work. But once you introduce mind into the mix, uh, you know, uh, you have to explore the possibilities and all possible ways that you can develop that idea. And uh, so far, we're just scratching the surface. So I don't think we're at the end of science by any matter of means. And, uh, but this opens the door 
if mind is important here, then it's an open question how, how pervasive that uh, influence of mind is. And uh, the idea of a, an incremental introduction of, of novelty and uh, of um, creativity into the universe instead of all to the beginning is, I think, a, a more attractive idea than to say that God created it and then just let it run like a clock.